Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Art, today we have a serious subject, don't we? Yeah, uh, today we're going to be talking about death. But I promise that in the end it will be uplifting. Good. Our guest today is a cantor and an author, inspirational speaker and coach, who has provided comfort to hundreds of people in the grieving process, and especially in talking to the dying as they're going through their final journey. Mm. We are delighted today to speak with Sue Knight Deutsch and this remarkable process she calls the Healing Hand. Hi, Sue. Hi, good morning. Sue, thanks for joining us. Um, that, the, the Helping Hand is, what's the full title of your book? It's The Healing Hand. Uh, the it's Healing Hand, okay. Healing Hand. Five discussions to have with the dying who are living. And notice there's five fingers on the hand. So those are the five discussions. And um, it's the, the title has dying who are living. So it's not just for the dying, it's also for the living. And that's, that's one of the hardest conversations to have in life ever. Yeah, so, so uh, Sue, how did this all come about? Um, I had been a hospice chaplain and a spiritual leader of an assisted living facility for 10 years when my husband was diagnosed stage four colon cancer. Oh boy. And 21 weeks later, uh, he passed away. And during that time, um, I was, we were fighting for his life. And in the last week of the, when he was in the hospital, one of the palliative care doctors came in and said, you know, there's some things you should talk about to him, um, things you need to talk before, before he passes away. And my children were going back and forth from the hospital, and they said, you know, what were those things again? And I said, put up your hand. You know, and the first is thank you, and the other finger is um, I forgive you. Will you forgive me? I love you, and goodbye. And so this became a mnemonic to remember the five discussions. And then I also thought when I am in my chaplaincy, I always use my hands to uh, touch people as they're, as they're in their dying process. So I found it helpful. My children found it helpful. And after my husband passed away, I used it in my chaplaincy with my families. And they kept coming back to me and saying, that was so helpful. And uh, I was asked to go to New York and train rabbis and cantors how to use music in the hospital room. And I, I introduced these five discussions and I had my son, who was an artist, make a picture with the five discussions on it. And somebody came up to me afterwards and said, um, this looks like a book cover, where can I buy your book? And I said, oh, I think that's how it came about. By the way, in full disclosure, in full disclosure, um, uh, uh, Sue and my path have crossed a few times, but uh, we especially became connected because uh, Michael uh, Deutsch uh, was one of my first Taiji coaches, and uh, uh, I not only enjoyed his company. Uh, and his teaching in school, but we also got together uh, just to practice one-on-one -on -one and sometimes in small groups of three or four uh, over a period of years. So I really got to know Michael and it was a, a, a shock to me uh, when he passed because he was a very healthy guy who knew martial arts and uh, he's a young man. Yeah, he yeah. was 55. Yeah. 55. So, so this you called it a mnemonic, this graphic idea, this symbolic uh, memory trick. Uh, just wonderful, just wonderful. First of all, um, I love the five topics. Um, they're so simple, and yet they're so important to share, aren't they? They are, and they are, and some of them are very difficult. And the thing about it is, you should... I hope you don't wait until you're dying to have these discussions because these are all 
discussions that are important in life. You know, the very first one is thank you, expressing gratitude. It actually, neuroscience has shown that expressing gratitude, even feeling gratitude, um, makes us happier. So thank you is the first one. And sometimes it's hard to say thank you to someone if perhaps the relationship has been strained. So you have to find ways. So that's, the book is more of a book of questions to ask yourself to stimulate the discussion. And uh, it's full of stories. Um, the second one, forgiveness. Again, that a lot of families say, oh, I have nothing to forgive them for. But you don't know if someone who's passing away in the back of their mind, there's something, there's some forgiveness that needs to happen. So if you can clear the decks, as it were, um, it's very helpful to the person who's passing away, as well as the one who's going to be left behind, so that there's a less chance of regret. So it's, I forgive you, and will you forgive me? That, that, that's um, a process that hopefully happens. It doesn't always happen. It depends on the, the relationship and the situation. Sure. Uh, and then I love you. I put that on the finger that's connected to the heart. You know, we wear our wedding ring here. Um, it's important to know that the person who's passing away wants to know that their life was meaningful, that they were loved. We all want to know that now. We don't want to wait until we're dying to, to say, oh, I had a meaningful life. Perhaps it's time to create that now. So that, that's an important discussion. And then the very last one is goodbye and letting go. And that's, that's a very difficult discussion to have. And if you've been through all those other ones, it actually becomes easier. Yeah, yeah. It, it seems to me that we ought to be buying your book now, long before we have a loved one on a deathbed, um, except for that fifth one, <laughs> goodbye. Um, it seems like it's really a good book to read at any age. Uh, and of course, we never know when somebody's going to die. You, your husband was in his early fifties. You were about the same age. Uh, what was that? Over ten years ago, I guess, right? It will be thirteen in April. Yeah. So I do want to say that since the pandemic, the sales of books have gone up, and I, I came out with the audio version because oh, I think around the world collectively we have been saying goodbye to yes. to relationships to not just to people who are dying but to our way of life we've, we've gone into this place of we're no longer here and we're not yet in the next space so and that if i might ask how can people uh, get a hold of your book um you can go on my website which is cantorsue.com c-a-n-t-o-r-s-u-e.com you can buy it on amazon um it's available on audible and itunes and ibooks if you prefer the electronic or the audio version yeah uh, I've, I've actually had the book for for years uh you're kind enough to uh, 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 uh sign a, a copy for me when it first came out and uh, the thing that struck me was uh, two things. Uh, the, the, less, the more obvious one, at least to me, was that this is just as important for the living and the ones who are going to live right. to carry on so that they can unburden themselves from, from some of the issues that you bring up in the book. But also, uh, you had, and I, I, I say this... Um, uh, and I think a, a good way, you had the opportunity to say goodbye to Michael. Uh, I did. Where, whereas a lot of people, uh, somebody yeah. dies suddenly in a car crash at 20, at 25, at 30, or at 70 or 80, uh, or uh, some yeah. other cat airplane crash, or just they have a heart attack and they die suddenly, there's no chance to say goodbye. Right. And irrespective of your personal views on afterlife or anything else, uh, uh, in, in, it seems that this is just as valuable if you are, let's say, at a chapel and the deceased is there in an open or closed casket, to have that conversation as well, even if they are not a conscious, uh, uh, maybe they're in a deathbed. Uh, I think you refer to as use your gut to to uh, have this conversation that they they could very well be hearing you or that spiritually they'll hear you even if they have been uh, you know, declared departed. 
So I think that that was probably uh, the, the two most important things that I got out of this was that it was as much for the grieving and the conversation, even if you were not fortunate as you were to have time, quality time to spend with Michael, is that you can have this even after they've passed. Yeah. Yeah, I, there's, at the end of the, thank you, uh, at the end of the book, I have a, a chapter on the grieving process, and I also have a chapter on self-care, because a lot of people uh, forget to take care of themselves when they're grieving. And in the grieving chapter, I write about how to address if, if the death has been sudden, or there are regrets, or if you didn't have the discussion, or even if you did have the discussion, to how to have that discussion after someone's passed away. And it doesn't mean communing with them um, necessarily through a medium, but simply it's, it's in psychology, it's called the empty chair uh, process where you put an empty chair and you imagine the person sitting there and you have a conversation with them, except that the answers come from your imagination, your head. So you mentioned uh, uh, in psychology, uh, you didn't just approach this book um, all of a sudden because your husband died and, and you had come up with it. You really have a background in all this. You are trained, am I correct, a trained psychologist? Um, social worker. So, so I, Okay. So I, you really knew you, this was a life's work, and all of a sudden you had to put it to, into action. Tell me about your background. Your, your, uh... So as you can probably hear from my accent, I'm not from New York. <laughs> I'm from England, and I trained um, when I was in England. I, my degree work was social psychology, and I trained as a psychiatric social worker. And then I came to this country, and um, my license wasn't good, and I was in the process of getting the license here. And then I got married and had children and um, didn't know what I was going to do, and then eventually became a cantor. Um, because I love music and liturgy, and um, I'm I'm Jewish in in a very soul soulful way. So I became cantor, and I got this job in an assisted living facility, and realized that it wasn't just about singing and praying. That there was a whole um, field of hospice care that I could then take those, it's like a jigsaw puzzle, or like, oh, I have these pieces that go together and, and put it all together. And then when I left my pulpit uh, six years ago, I um, took a certificate in positive psychology with the Whole Being Institute. And that even changed my whole view of what I had learned when I was younger in, psycho in you know, a traditional psychology. Well, I, I am very impressed uh, with your personal journey. And uh, I, I have to tell you that I think you're the perfect guest, not only because your book is, is extremely useful for a lot of people, but Celebrating Act Two is all about life after 50. Um, it's arguably 50 years old, arguably the second beginning of the second half of your life, if you plan on living to 100 like Art does. <laughs> well, I uh, actually, I actually, I have a rolling 25 year plan. So uh, yeah, I'll get to 100. But how far beyond that? Um, I'm open. You're not, you're not taking any. Mess. I'm not taking anything off the table. <laughs> By the but, way, but I did you... say I did say this would be uplifting. And I think that uh, at certainly at this point, we've uh, uh, proven this to be true. Uh, so I thank you, Sue. But uh, you, what, what do you have coming up next? Well, so I mentioned the positive psychology. So uh, uh, there are 25 alumni um, of the C Certificate in Positive Psychology program who have authored a book who the main, the main um, author is Donna Matire Miller, and she uh, called on us to write a chapter on positive psychology um, according to SPIRE, which is spiritual, physical, intellectual, relational, and emotional approach to whole being happiness. And I chose to write on spirituality as it relates to positive psychology. So I have a chapter in that book that uh, was just published. And um, I'm going to be teaching at an annual event at Camp Widow. It's in person this, this year. It wasn't able to be uh, in 2020. 
Camp Widow is a program of the Soaring Spirits International, which uh, is about three to four hundred widows. Uh, they have workshops, and it, it and we don't sit around crying. It's it's all about moving forward in life. So um, I've got that coming up, and I'm in the middle of writing a spiritual memoir. Wow, mm. good for you. So your your second act of your life is pretty busy. Very busy, and it's nowhere where I expected to be. Going to be <laughs> That's turned. wonderful. I, sure. I'm, I'm just about 66, and I never expected to be in this place. I thought I would be retiring with my husband, right. and I had to reinvent myself. And I think that happens uh, with a lot of people. There are, there are five Ds that push you into transformation. Death, disaster, downsizing, disease, and I'm trying to think of the other one. Divorce. Yeah. Wow. All wow. those things are like life changes that sure. you have to create another act. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. No matter what your age. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think I think that, um, uh, Sue, you have been the perfect guest uh, okay. for a lot of reasons. But uh, talking about death being uplifting. OK, if anybody could pull this off. Uh, and and uh, make something positive out of this, and, and it was you, and you certainly done that. And quite frankly, um, I'm looking forward to having future discussions, perhaps even some for our audience, on some of these other things that you're involved in. Because uh, since we're living longer, healthier lives, those of us who survive to our 70s, 80s, 90s, right. and 100 and beyond uh, have a lot of living to do. And you are the epitome of people who are living it to the fullest and dealing with what otherwise might be considered to be just devastating topics, uh, but to be able to get the most out of it. So, uh, I had, if I may interrupt you please. for a second, I had a young widow who looked at the title of the book and she said, well, he's already dead. What can this do for me? And I said, do you know anyone that's going to get out alive? And she said, no. I said, well, we're, we're all, going to die and we're all living this is about living because ultimately we're all going to all going to die so let's live it's yeah. about living mm. yeah excellent stuff so i i look forward to talking with you again about some of the many subjects you've mentioned thank you so much for taking the time to join us thank you for having me thank, thank you for more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.